Howdy, hey there, my most excellent photography friends, and welcome to Pro Photo Tips. Josh Cripps here. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. Welcome to the final installment of this series of how to process the Milky Way. In the first video, I showed you how to process a standalone Milky Way photo. Then in the second video, I showed you how you can start to take a photo from dusk and combine it with a photo of the nighttime to get a good composite. And the trick is all about color and tone matching. Then in the third part of the video, I showed you how to create an initial selection and how to refine that selection to get a really perfect mask between the two things. However, at the end of that video, we left off with a little bit of a problem, which is we have this very beautiful, refined, targeted mask, but I can still see the tufa from my night exposure popping out behind my good tufa. So I have all this wonderful detailed tufa texture and then all this ugly tufa texture from the sky exposure sitting there behind it. And I want to get rid of that stuff so we have this really perfect transition between the tufa and the sky. That's what we're going to be tackling in this final video. But first, after working with these images for a while, I decided that overall this image is a little bit too dark, so I want to brighten it up. Thankfully, I have been working with smart objects this whole time, so all I got to do is jump into ACR here, put the exposure up to what I want, say about a stop above. Now I have to do that to my Tufa Tower exposure as well, otherwise all that hard work I did to make a nice composite is right out the window. Holy cow, that would be annoying. I just don't want it to go out the window, so there you go. So now we still have that good looking exposure, everything, or that good looking composite, everything is just a little bit brighter. And we still have that ugly tufa to deal with. Now, I'm gonna show you guys my favorite technique for dealing with this, and you're gonna be amazed how simple it is and how powerful it is. Now, this is finally time to explain why I put my foreground exposure on top of my Milky Way exposure here in Photoshop. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a completely brand new empty layer by hitting Control Alt Shift or Command Option Shift N, as in new layer. What that's gonna do is gonna bring up this empty layer in between the foreground layer and the Milky Way layer. And what I can do is I can actually now use the clone stamp to clone stars, make sure that your sample is current and below. That's absolutely critical. Basically what we're gonna do, let me turn off that top tufa layer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clone a bunch of stars basically over the top of these tufas like this. So what's gonna happen then when I turn back on the visibility of my tufa layer is that ugly fuzzy tufa is gonna disappear leaving behind just the perfectly sharp-edged selected tufa from our other layer. Now, the tufa itself is not disappearing in that Milky Way layer because I'm doing it on its own separate layer. So that's the beauty of this cleanup layer in between the two other layers. So let me turn this all back on. And I'll delete that and start over from scratch. And what you want to do is you want to sample stars from near where you're painting out the soft tufa. So kind of like this. And it's okay if you just make a bunch of bunch of little grabs and just paint in all the stars around the tufa like this. And all that ugly defocused noisy tufa gonna disappear leaving behind super highly refined oops there we go tufa like so Now I'm not going to do this around the whole thing. You guys don't need to watch me do that. I'll just do it to the spots where the tufa is most egregiously offending. Now if you find that as you do this, 
some of your tufa features start to disappear, it's because your mask and your selection wasn't precise enough. So you can go back and you can adjust your layer mask to really refine that tufa and get it in, or your for whatever your foreground is. I'm just using tufa because it's quite complex and it's just a great example of how powerful this feature is. There we go. So if I turn that layer on and off now, you can see we went from this soft edge, fuzzy, fuzzy edge to this really nice, super refined edge. And the same on this tufa up here. Now, you can see that in this case, perhaps my mask was a little aggressive and a lot of my tufa features disappeared. So this is somewhere where I would go back into my mask and I would really take the time to clean up the edges around this tufa as best I could, either using the channels to identify where the edges of the tufa are or by using uh, the pen tool to manually draw an edge around the tufa. That's actually the most super precise way to do it. It's also the most painstaking. But you can see, again, in the idea here, I'm just going to show you guys the theory so that you can apply this to your own image rather than force you to sit here and watch me create a mask around the tufa for the next four hours. So that's what I'm going to be doing is basically stamping, clone stamping out around the tufa wherever I have those soft edges. So now I have this really, really perfectly refined, highly selected foreground tufa with those beautiful stars in the background. And at this point, this gives me a very nice basic composite. You can see how it compares to the original. It's the same scene, however, now we just have a lot more detail in the tufa. So if I save this at this point, what's going to happen is it'll show back up in my Lightroom catalog. And what I can do at this point is bring it into that Lightroom raw processor and make a lot of the same adjustments that I made before in that first part of this video. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I have a whole video about how I already processed the Milky Way for this photo. There you have it. That's how I process my Milky Way photos from start to finish, both for single photos and for doing composites to get the maximum amount of quality in the photo. So thank you guys for your patience in watching this series. I hope you really enjoyed it and can apply a lot of these approaches to your own photography to create some really breathtaking Milky Way photos in the future. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.